Ahoy Upholders. Last time we were aboard silver ships sailing through the sky. This time we touched down in a faraway land for a fantastical tour. We'll be tripping around Toontown, communing with spirits, and dining with royalty. So come on and okay with us. We won't cross the yellow, blue, or red line. Tonight's theme is anime. I am your host, uh, Davin Skelhorn, and with me as always, Chris Worldmine Murphy. How you doing, Murphy? Oh, not so bad, you know. Just got Totoro stuck in my head. Totoro, Totoro. <laughs> Totoro, Totoro. You guys I'll lucky I didn't have time to grab that clip. Or I was going to play it like over and over again. I... <laughs> Best we got the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a guest tonight. Uh, my cousin, your cousin, everyone's cousin. Eamon Mater. How you doing, Eamon? Yes. Hello. Of Eamon on track fame. Yes. And a uh, great show. Everyone check it out. Uh, all right. Well, mm-hmm. you know, this is season one, episode 15 of our show. And yes, it is on already. anime. This was Murphy's grand plot, grand scheme, diabolical machinations, if you will, to make me watch four anime movies in a row. Even though we only have three movies Wait, what's the on our show. Watched? He, we had to end the last episode with uh, an anime movie because that uh, was part of Murphy's grand scheme. The now, wind rises. Good job, Murphy. You, 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 your plan worked perfectly. Well, needless to say, we won't need to watch any more anime at least for a few episodes. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, there's some ups and downs here. Uh, be interested. Uh, what are your opening thoughts, Eamon? So, I'm going to be honest, I really liked two of these movies, and the other one I just thought was good. Okay. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Very, very interesting. What about you, Murphy? I mean, one of them is an all-time classic that stands out forever, in my opinion. Another one's a bona fide kids movie, and another one was, as Eamon so aptly put it, um, a film that was just pure cocaine. <laughs> and yeah (laughs) i it was it was about as as bland and as tasteless if i had to 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 describe it but see uh, i i i I liked that aspect of it but we'll get into that when we get to what up bubonic oh yeah we'll we'll get into it well you know we have a a regular segment on our show you may or may not know this this aemon i do not or origin stories okay so so aemon what's with you and movies with me in movies um mm-hmm. honestly i don't watch too many movies i mainly go and watch like whatever i hear is good in the movie theater and then occasionally i watch a classic <laughs> i'm not someone who usually sits down in the living room for a movie i usually go to the movie theater for a movie i guess is what i'm trying to say you enjoy the movie going experience yes mm. Fair enough. We'd like to preserve that movie-going experience for many generations to come, wouldn't we, Murphy? I mean, I I have always enjoyed the movie-going experience since I was a wee lad, and it's probably one of my favorite experiences, so I hope it perpetuates yeah. forever as long as we're existing. Well, you know, it sounds, like, Eamon, like you should uh, go back and perhaps uh, catch up on this grand podcast we have here, because, you know, it'll... uh give you a lot of good movies to choose from and others to avoid i'm sure mm-hmm. if your dad says it's good avoid it avoid it like the plague i was already doing <laughs> that but thanks for letting me know <laughs> it's true it's true i love him just not the movies he likes <laughs> Same. um yeah exactly um so we have theater one here my neighbor totoro from mm-hmm. 1988 starring Chika Sakamoto, Noriko Hidaka, and Hitoshi Takagi. Takagi? Hmm. I might butcher some of these um, Japanese pronunciations, mm. and I apologize. Um, how do you pronounce this director's name? Or Hideo Miyazaki. We've got we've got two um, Ghibli films tonight. Got we this do the first of them. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so and we had one uh, last episode as well. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. We ended with a Gib- Ghibli film, and we are uh, we're starting it off with two Ghibli films with My Neighbor Totoro. Mm-hmm. All right. Totoro, Totoro. I just think this movie is. Shit, get some shit. Jungle Boy. It's the good time, flat and high fantasy you've been looking for. It's a journey that will take you to heights you've always dreamed about. Hang on tight to my neighbor, Totoro. They're furry. They're cuddly. They're huge. And they're huge and cuddly. They're lovable. And there was a little one. And one this big. And a great big one. But to grow up, great big one. Totoro. Totoro. Invisible. The cat bus. Watching this film because it's like you can see the building blocks of basically all of Miyazaki's films. Miyazaki. Oh, all of Miyazaki's films and all of Ghibli's films. If we're being completely honest. Totoro. It's the fantasy that's bigger than your imagination. Never I don't know. My imagination is pretty bus. big. An umbrella he took I mean, can you, are you telling me you can honestly it's say you thought of a cat bus? Of a lifetime. <laughs> no. A cat bus feels like it would be something straight out of Harry Potter. Listen, I've been high, but I've never been cat bus high. <laughs> you just aren't trying hard enough. You were small. You dreamed of adventures this tall. This is the first Ghibli. I did not know that, actually. Oh, yep. Animation director Hayao Miyazaki. Hayao. An animated adventure for children of all ages. My neighbor Totoro. Yeah. I mean, this is the first. No, this is the first Ghibli I watched. I w- so I was actually originally going to nominate the first movie I watched, a Ghibli movie, which was Spirited Away. But that's a 2001 movie, so I couldn't um, just because I was taking Davin's pre-2000 spot. But um, this one is also still really, really good. Um, but I will say, I, I just think this this movie makes me feel like a child. It makes me feel like a kid in all the best ways, even as an adult. I did, like my first time watching this was in a, as an adult, and I totally felt that feeling of this childhood wonder and liveliness and excitability and adventure and highs and lows and everything in between, kind of. Oh yeah, it's got yeah. that like pure childhood imagination behind it. You know, it's these kids that want to believe in forest spirits and and chase and run around with them and fly through the air and all these wild little psychological adventures which you know they don't quite say oh is it a dream is it what like there it's very blurred the lines this film when it comes to stuff like that but you know it's a classic it's uh, it's, it basically started a whole studio this movie of like strengths and weaknesses for me like its strengths are it i mean its visuals are nice um but not not don't blow me away. Like the the way the creatures in Totoro look, it's just a little basic and not, doesn't, you know, particularly eye catching. Um, it it does have. I like that it has a positive ending, even because mm. uh, it is a kids movie and it, mm. and it it does it is kind of sad at times and you're just like, yeah, this is kind of a weird, depressing kids movie, but it is actually kind of a happy ending. Um, and the weaknesses of it, like I think the strength of it, are it's like more adult themes. Like it's I don't know. I feel like this doesn't know if it wants to be a kids movie or an adults movie. That's interesting. I don't think I would put I could put a kid in front of this now, like a four year old or a five year old, and have them sit through it and enjoy it. I think they'd be pretty bored. Like the adventure and fantasy elements are probably like five minutes total. I think the first thing I said to Murphy was that movie could have been five minutes long. Hmm. Uh, it's twenty five minutes long, but yeah, twenty five minutes long. Yeah, like 
and and I felt that watching it, was, it there's a lot of just drawn out scenes and I get it they're just trying to like capture childhood and they, it does that nicely but as far as like a narrative in a, a like a, just a movie to sit through I found it was pretty slow and it didn't do a whole lot didn't say a whole lot it's messaging as a whole at the end which I don't think a kid will clue into that like you know like jo- like tragedy is mixed with joy and joy is mixed with tragedy and like that's like that's interesting like, because i i think that, that i think that this this movie has a message for kids and adults but it's also the kind of message that if you watched it as a kid and then watched it again as an adult you would have a totally new layer of movie to understand i i kind of agree with that because i remember watching the film when i was a bit younger um and it not a lot stood out just like the more fantastical stuff um but the the more nuanced um reality based of of the the whole film it was it it kind of glossed over me as a kid and as a grown adult now i kind of like could read those nuances a bit more and it fleshed out the whole film uh, watching Mm. it as a second time so i mean i get the idea like it's 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 kind of aimed towards being a kid's film but um it's a deep kids film if it is a kids film at all mm. you know so yeah yeah, um, I, yeah I think that's where it fails it's not quite a kids film and it's not quite a movie for adults it's just stuck in the middle somewhere and it left me just kind of like a, a bit bored well let's way. let's get into the, the plot a bit shall yeah we? So, uh, yeah, My Neighbor Totoro from 1988 uh, tells a heartwarming story of the Kusakaba family from uh, Satsuya Kusakaba, which is played by Dakota Kent Fanning and Noriko Hidako, and her younger sister May, played by Ellie Fanning and Chika Sakamoto. Um, They move to a rural village with their father, Tatsuo, who's played by Tim Daly, or Shigatsato Ito. Shigatsato Ito, the creator of the Mother Games. I'm sure most people know that, if you know that, but yeah. Anyways. Uh, And Mother Yasuko, which is played by Lia Salonga and Sumi Shimamoto, uh, to be closer to the hospital where their mother is receiving. That's basically the families move closer to be with their family. When they get to to their new location... Uh, we're introduced to Davin's scene that holds up the most here. <laughs> oh. <gasps> what a lot of neat old junk! You think it's haunted? <gasps> Maybe it is! Oh, boy! Come on, I better convince you around the house! Oh, hey, wait a minute! completely rotten. Uh-oh, it's gonna fall down. <laughs> this bit got me. <laughs> I can't believe they put that in the movie. <laughs> What a tree! It's giant! Well, that wasn't the scene I meant, but you know, that's fine. Well, you said the one they were running around. Is that not the yeah, one where they no, were running no, around? No, there's like a scene, like a, probably like the very next scene, where like the father's doing something in the kitchen. Oh, and yeah, very like, similar That scene. little girl's just running back and forth in the backyard <laughs> behind him, and he's just like ignoring it all, but she's just like losing her mind. That's the most. Pretty that's the most. Child, that's your future, by the way, Davin. When your when your kid grows up, that's gonna be your. That's gonna be your uh, existence. She does that now. <laughs> she, she, that's her right now. That's why I picked that scene. So yeah, not the right scene, but you know, that one was fine. All right. All right. Well, this is this is why I I encourage you to give me time codes with your scenes instead of just a very vague description. Well, you're lucky otherwise. I watched these three movies. I couldn't go back again for time codes. Anyway. Just if you think you see a seat, just pause it and check what the time is. Like gives me a better idea. Anyway, you didn't though. I was expecting like a better scenes the entire time. Um, 
As Sasuke and Mei settle in their new home, they encounter a mischievous acorn-loving creature known as a soot sprite. Um, these small black and fuzzy spirits playfully interact with the girls and add to the magical atmosphere of their new surroundings. In their exploration of the countryside, Satsuki and Mei come across a colossal camphor tree that serves as a gateway to the realm inhabited by Totoro and other extraordinary creatures. Um, the mother basically... probably has tuberculosis. Well, okay, so there okay. there was talk about that. So, like, it's hinted that she has tuberculosis because uh miyazaki's actual mother had tuberculosis um I mean, if it's and... the time frame like so people got mm. back in those days <laughs> yeah um and and basically because of that you know um he he wrote the story it's basically like a, a small biography of his own life but he didn't write it so it'd be two boys because like him and his younger brother he wrote it as girls he says it would be too close if it was you know the other way around um but yeah, so the girls, you know, they, uh, where was I? Right. So you know, uh, it's to... a bit hard to kind of explain the plot of this movie. I really think you just got to watch it because it I sounds, mean, yeah. so much... I think it sounds so much boring than it actually is. Um, so yeah, totally well, a lot happens. Story. That's why, like, it doesn't, the description doesn't work well because not a lot happens. Mm. It's like the girls yeah, run there's... off, they grow some there's corn, really not... they get the, Totoro gets them a cat bus because the little girl runs away. This is my favorite <laughs> this, this scene, the, basically, in the, the film. Uh, yeah, of course. This is an iconic scene. Mm -hmm. Just fucking Totoro playing with an umbrella in water. I just liked his little face. I thought it was adorable. He is adorable. So basically, the girls spend time with Totoro and his friends, and they learn to appreciate nature's wonders and develop a deep bond with the forest. Totoro becomes a simple joy and imagination in the spirit of nature. The sisters encounter with Totoro and the other magical beings help them cope with the challenges the family faces, especially their mother's illness. Um... <laughs> Yeah, you just get like this very fantastical scene between you know uh, the kids and Totoro, and then the cat bus shows up, and it's like they're waiting in the rain by themselves, and it's not like yeah. is this a dream sequence? Are they alive? Who can t really tell, right? I I love Cody Simpson. Devin is an anime Karen. I don't even know what that's, that means. That's true. <laughs> but yeah. I don't either. But I think he's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Jody says Totoro is a beautiful movie. It is a beautiful movie. Like maybe it is. It's just boring and it kind of lost me at the cat bus scene to be honest. I can't believe it. Like I am just like I don't know what You got to go back. Like, the the, the Totoro that's, 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 that's a little lost in translation. That's one of the most iconic shots of all time in the anime industry because of how it's, it's, awesome. It's, it's, I, I I just love that picture. It's like why I, I it, it's fine it. art. I, that, I could hang that as a painting. People do. People have made yeah. Many people have this, this, this very it, image as a painting on their wall. Yeah. I don't um. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I watch these animes, and I don't know what's happening, and I don't know. Like I just I don't know. There's something. It's really it's really odd that you don't know what's happening in this film because this film and the next film are probably no. This the most this like... this one I do. This one's very simple. The last yeah. one definitely. It's like what's going on. But anyway. Um. So yeah, the kids get get these acorns from Totoro, and they they go to planet. Um. It just isn't well, very adventurous, you know. Like um, any movie that like that would have been made like this that I ever saw, there would have been f way more adventure with this fantastical being, where except for rather than like just a couple of quick scenes, really. Mm. Like it, oh. it just was. It was just very low on adventure and fantasy, and like very high on just kind of real life stuff that I don't think will entertain a child very much. Well, I mean, the adventure fantasy of a flying squirrel rabbit creature. Like, I don't know. It's There, there is adventure yeah, and there's, fantasy. There's here. a couple of scenes. There's just not very many. There's like that one and there's like the cat bus. It, it, it's a shorter movie for certain. But honestly, I like that. I, I liked the, this in Red Line. I'll spoil. I liked that these were lighter movies. I, I've always been a fan of lighter movies, personally. Oh, yeah. I like shorter movies, too. <laughs> 
Um, eventually, um, the girls uh, find out that their mother's getting sick, so she runs to the phone to call her father. He rushes to the hospital. And in this bit, May's curiosity leads her on to adventure to find her mother, who she believes is residing in the hospital nearby. Uh, determined to see her, May embarks on a journey alone, but ends up getting lost. Um, distraught and scared, she encounters the mysterious cat bus. The cat bus helps May find her way and reunites her with her family. Uh, which at this point we we basically got to got to Eamon's like favorite scene where the cat bus kind of reunites the whole family. There you are, Satoki! <laughs> oh, me! So normally, this would have been the first act of this entire movie. Like they get to a farm, the girl misses her mother, runs away to try to find her, and that would be the beginning of the movie. Next up, Shichiro Kamiya. Shichiro Kamiya. Shichiro Kamiya. Shichiro Kamiya. You mean we can go to mom's hospital? You're wonderful! All I can think about is how soft the inside of that cat bus is. I see what cats it was eat all because of my silly cold otherwise ingested. That I wouldn't want to be on the, the inside of a cat. All of you. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically they the they kind of see the father and the mother are okay. May leaves the corn that she has for the mother. They somehow get the corn and it's written for mom or whatever it was on the corn, right? They, they get all that. It's like, this is the point where it's like, are they dreaming? Are they not dreaming? They're able to like manipulate things in the real world, yet you know, they're they're back that at was home. That's my problem with the last stuff. anime movie too. I could never tell when the, it was dreaming. Oh no, there was, was a clear life. distinction between dreams and real life in The Wind Rises. This one was very blurred. Um, but yeah, so the film touches on themes of folklore and spiritual connections between humans and nature, May's encounter with the spirits, and Totoro's world blurs the line between reality and fantasy, emphasizing on the importance of imagination and the unseen wonders of the natural world. Meanwhile, Suzuki juggles her responsibilities as the older sister and tries to support May during their mother's absence. Together, they navigate the challenges of growing up and face their fears and find solace and comfort of the friendship and magical encounters. Um, yeah. You're going to read that stuff? Just read it, Murphy. <laughs> if you just whip through it like that, I can't even hear what you're saying. <laughs> just take the extra 20 seconds and say it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah. My neighbor Totoro. That's, that's neighbor. basically... Totoro. Totoro. I think this is our fastest like plot do, summary do, ever. Do, like we got that done in ten minutes. Because, because the movie could have been ten or fifteen minutes. Like I said, this whole movie was the first act of any kids' movie I ever saw. <clears throat> like the, then the, there would have been, but you know, it. I don't know if it, it doesn't know what it's trying to be. I don't think it just. Yeah, we can't hear you anymore. Yeah, Eamon, you've Eamon. gone silent, mate. Yes, you're silent, Eamon. Well, yeah, I can see him. I... He's feverishly disagreeing with everything I'm saying, but we can't hear him do it. <laughs> 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 Let's just assume Eamon. Oh, wait, wait. No, I can tell he's agreeing with everything I'm saying. Eamon, if if you're agreeing with everything I'm saying, say absolutely nothing. Oh, he's gone. He just I insulted. <laughs> he's just like I'm done. So, I'm out of here. Um, no, but like, don't you agree with me, Murphy? Like, this is the first act of any kids' movie like that we grew up with. Uh, yeah, for the most part, it it is. She would run time. away, and then the the adventures would ensue. Like, just nothing. Can, now we still can't hear you. He's not just muted on the thing, is he? No, he's not muted. He's no, he's not, not muted. muted. Um, yeah. well, you figure no, it out, Eamon. You're right. The, yeah. It's basically the first act. There's there's a good like 30, 40 minutes of this film where it's just like, um, there's like a lot of like scenery and, that they show, and the kids really kind of like, running around. And stuff. And, yeah, it just I don't, I don't I, this one didn't wow me. It, uh, it's not a lot it, to as it, a like, kids movie or an adult movie. It didn't wow me. I mean, the way it, out of all the animes, know, Totoro, Totoro is a classic. Out of, of the world of animes, Totoro is a bona fide classic, mostly because of its impact on uh, American culture. 
Um, that's how it became quote unquote a classic. Um, is it one of the best like old school animes? I don't personally think so. I think it's a, a, a soft pitch movie. I, I personally would have picked mm. fucking Akira or something. Uh, that's like the greatest anime. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, it's Totoro. Like it's, it's, Totoro. it's a kid's film. There's just not much to it. There's not a lot of substance, but it's, like as a kid's film, not a lot to draw in a kid. Like it takes a long time to get to that cat bus, and that's when the kids are gonna start paying attention. I feel like the kids would pay attention to the the initial introduction of Totoro, but there is there is a yeah. big gap between that initial introduction and the cat bus eventually. But um, even that, like, is kind of boring because he's just lying there asleep and he doesn't say anything. Like. Mm. I find as Bubonic said, I think you'd appreciate this movie watching it as a kid, then the nostalgia of watching it as an adult. It's like, yeah. It could could be. But I think as a kid I would have been bored and not went back to this one. I would have watched Ninja Turtles again. Entirely it's possible. It. Yeah. So But uh well game in says his internet sometime doesn't exist. But yeah. uh, which which performance would you hold up, Murphy? Uh, which performance would I hold up? Are you back, Eamon? Not yet. All right. <laughs> uh, my performance that I would hold up for Totoro, uh, I guess it would have to be Satsuki, like the main ki- young kid, female character, like the main protagonist. The youngest girl. Yeah. Not the youngest, not May, like the, oh, the older oh. youngest, the older daughter of the film. Like she uh, has the most pull and energy i guess in the film like maybe the dust sprites i'll pick a dust sprite the dust sprites were the act the performance that held up for me <laughs> you know um yeah 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 well what's up sam for me i might say i might say may may screams a little too much for my taste i'd be like settle down honey here with my daughter <laughs> uh but uh, other than that, I would say whoever sings Totoro, Totoro, I, I, her performance holds up for me. Because <laughs> that's been stuck in my head since like you should first show me this trailer. It's true. Totoro, it's true. I, I was half tempted to to take the intro and just replace the music with the Totoro, Totoro, just yeah, just for this one episode. I would have, but uh, if I had an extra like hour or two, maybe. Well, the setting and aesthetic. Um, beautiful. Like the setting and the aesthetic is just beautiful. It's very, it's very eighties. Um, you can even tell by the style of clothing that everyone's drawing in, like being drawn in. Like the the dad's well, it's, very it's, it like takes wide place in pants the 50s. and stuff. Is it the fifties? It's the fifties. Yeah, it's post war. Oh. Or I else didn't... tuberculosis wouldn't be an issue. Not in um... the eighties. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I didn't, I didn't really get a time frame or reference of time yeah. frame when this was. Yeah. So I just kind of was like, it's yeah, the this pants are very. It's it's definitely the fifties. Right, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was beautiful. Um, gorgeous backgrounds. Um, yep. Very lovely countryside. Uh, yeah, I liked the kind of background painting and artwork a bit more than the foreground stuff because, like I say, the 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 Totoro design kind of bores me. I don't mm. find him like adorable or cute or anything. It's just a circle with the two eyes and a, a mouth. Like it's something a kid would draw, which I think is the point. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to look like a kid's drawing because it's a kid's imagination. And I think that's clever, but you know, it's just it's a, not an intriguing character design. Yeah. I think it was, uh, they went through a few iterations to become approachable, if you will. Um, mm. Ultimately, um, well, they probably wanted something to be kids could draw as well, you know. Yeah. So, what's, what's up, Eamon? You're back? I don't know why. Eamon's volume's really... Hey, man. Have you tried turning it on and off? What do they Did say on that Did you plug it IP? in? <laughs> Did you turn it on and off if you plugged it in? Yeah, plugged it in. Turn it on and off. Well, yeah, so the setting is very good. 
Heyman, you can just text us your answers to all these questions. Give us a thumbs up if you like the setting and aesthetic. <laughs> you like the setting and aesthetic, Heyman? Uh, yeah. Well, you got, yeah, he likes the setting and aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to some uh, delicious, delicious morsels, because I'm a Ted Peckish myself. Okay. Well, let's just... So, movie morsels for the film My Neighbor Totoro from 1988. Uh, not, I'm going to be honest with you, today's episode, there's not going to be a lot of movie morsels. This is probably going to have the most out of any of them, but we'll, we'll get through these real quick. The film is partially autobiographical. When Hayao Miyazaki and his brothers were children, his mother suffered from spinal tuberculosis for nine years and spent much of her time hospitalized. It is implied, yet never revealed in the film, that Satsuki and May's mother also suffers from tuberculosis. He once said the film would have been too powerful, painful for him to make if the two protagonists were boys instead of girls. Uh, the force creatures and title characters And of as this a movie, fellow about to have two daughters, I liked the fact that it was two girls. Like, I... I this movie did hit a little close to home with like the little girls. But, so. That's I, I did not know that the, the second one was to be a girl. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, man. Well, she's going to be here in a month or two. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, the forest creatures and the title characters of this movie got their name when May, the little girl who first sees them in the film, mispronounces the word troll. At one point in the original Japanese language version, when Satsuki first finds Mei sleeping in the grove behind their house, Mei tells her sister she saw a Totoro. Satsuki replies, Totoro, do you mean troll? From the storybook? And Mei nods in agreement. This aspect of the story was left out of the 1993 Fox English version, probably because of the difference between Tororu, the Japanese pronunciation of troll, and Totoro, uh, would have been lost on English-speaking audiences. The quote is included in the 2006 Disney English version, though. Um, and that being said, I think there's a few things. Like, I, I always seem to not enjoy animes as much as everybody else and as much as I'm supposed to. And I think there are some times where, like, the jokes aren't coming through on the dub or the subtitles or, like... Yes, because you know what? I, um... On Redline, I tried to watch the dubs and I couldn't do it. It was too distracting between the art and the words. So I just went for the subs version and, or sorry, I tried to watch subs and then I, I couldn't do that because it was too distracting. So I went for the dubs version. It was far more easier to watch, but the dialogue was vastly different because I was still getting subtitles for the Japanese version and the lines were like kind of close, but not exactly. So it's, it's it's a lot get gets lost in translation, which is generally why people are like watch subs over dubs because you're getting the full context as opposed to a dub, which is just like anglicized, you know, speech. See, that was the script. opposite was what I had with Redline. So for Redline, I was watching a dubbed version, but I still had the English subtitles on beneath it. So in the dub, they clearly. Uh, just kind of went with it a bit and maybe didn't go exactly word for word and they just kind of made it more colloquial english mm. whereas and when i so it didn't match the subtitles below the subtitles below was just all very matter of fact what they yeah. say like summarized yeah. versions of what the actors were actually saying so it's well, like they, is that what i'm always getting the subs it's like yeah well know. they kept like touching yeah. on like uh the talent or something like that. It kept saying the talent and the subs, but they would never say that in the English version. But again, we're, we're, we're diverting. Um, yeah. So uh, final movie morsels for this one. The movie initially did not do well at the box office uh, and it did not break even until about two years after the release when the stuffed dolls based on the King Totoro character hit the shelves. Merchandising baby. Uh, Tickle my me neighbor Totoro, is it? Yeah, pretty much. It was Jeff Hans Tickle Me Totoro season, and they got big plushy Totoros, and the kids were all about them. And, like, there's a store down on Bloor that, like, has them in window displays. Um, I'm Totoro. My Neighbor Totoro was released as a double feature alongside Isayo Takahara's film Grave of the Fireflies. The contrasting themes and tones of the two films created a unique cinematic experience for audience. I don't know this film, and I'm going to look it up at some point. Um, I actually did some research on that, so I can tell you. So, The Grave of the Fireflies is a World War II movie, and super depressing. Mm. I haven't ah. seen it, but I saw the trailer. 
So, um, so they had a, a World War II film in conjunction released with a child spirit film? <laughs> yes, and, and theaters were allowed to play them in whichever order they wanted. Now, chronologically, wow. it should have gone Grave of the Flyerflies because it's a World War II and Totoro was post-war. Mm. And then it ends on a happier note, but I believe most theaters went the other way around. And people are just like, ha, 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 Totoro. Oh, my God, at the end. Like at the, <laughs> and then it's like, like Watership Down all over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, The film's success led to the creation of the iconic Totoro bus stop in the Aichi Prefecture of Japan. The bus stop designed to resemble the one in the film has become a popular tourist attraction for fans of the movie. Uh, and the final movie morsel, the sequence where May gets lost attempting to deliver an ear of corn to her mother includes her sitting by a row of statues in Japan. Such statues represent the Bodhisattva Jizo, the Buddhist deity who is the protector of children. Thus the effect... And uh, That might have been it. Bodhisattva B O D H I S A T T V A. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So the effect of Mayo Miyazaki <laughs> is conveying is a subtle reassurance to the audience that May, although lost at the moment, is otherwise in no immediate danger while her sister is coming to her aid in the Capless. Uh, cinematography by Hiseo Shirai, edited by Takeshi Seomo, music by Joe Hisasashi. Release date, April 16th, 1988. Running time, 86 minutes. Budget of $3.7 million, roughly 500 million yen. And a box office of $41 million. Um, I guess we lost Eamon. <laughs> Eamon, if you're there, pop back in so you can give us a thumbs up for your hold up vote. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, he's not <laughs> here at all. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. No. All right. So rewatchability. What about you, Murphy? You, as someone who has rewatched it. Oh, man, uh, if I rewatch this again, it's probably not going to be for like another 10 years. And if I have a child with that child, otherwise, I probably don't think I'd rewatch this film again. Like, I can't see. I don't think going I don't think I'll show this one to my daughters. I mean, and if I do, it would just be to see if it bores them. Um, yeah. But it's not like not that I think it's bad. I just think it's like. Like I think, but you might have said it best. Actually, it's just a bit of a softball. Yeah, yeah, it's a softball. Movie. Kids like, film, kind of a bit right? of a softball. Yeah. Um, Murphy, you know, like what? Like, I think. Uh, what, what did what did uh, Jody say here? Uh, which I thought was interesting. Oh yeah, Roger Ebert said it is a little sad, a little scary, a little surprising, and a little informative, just like life itself. And I think that sums it up, Jody says. Well, Jody, I think all those things are probably all true. But as a movie, it was just kind of boring. <laughs> a bit of a softball. Um, and I don't I don't know. I didn't get the scary. You know, I mean, there was like a the th thought of was... losing your mother, like losing the family member. Like that's scary. I, I, I suppose the, the scary part is like when May is off running by herself and they can't find her. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, that kind of stuff, I guess. That's probably really the only little bit of scary. You know, a little mm -hmm. bit indeed. Well, all right. The big question. Yeah, we don't we got to get Eamon's vote at some point. But uh, does it does it hold up, Murphy? Yeah, it does hold up actually. Like, um, even though it's it's not a a, a film of substance uh, as a piece of art in and of itself, it holds up. And um, I enjoyed watching the film. I enjoyed watching the film. Like, so it holds up. I'm actually going to really almost complete opposite of that. I think it is a film of substance, somewhat, though simple. The simple substance. Line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I but say but um, I don't think it does. I don't think it'll hold up if it's a kids' movie. I don't think a modern kid is gonna enjoy this movie. Um, and I didn't really. Just a few scenes that with the little girl made me smile, but other than that, and I like yeah. that it had a happy ending. So, but I'm gonna give this one a no. No, if you didn't watch the movie, Sam. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, <laughs> Sam? What are you doing here? Eamon, 
Where yet? <laughs> does it hold awesome. up? I think Eamon will say it does hold up. I he think was, he. I he think definitely... Eamon's choice is that it, it holds up. He was saying this is one of his yeah enjoyable movies out of the three. Um, yeah. yeah. Eamon, we're going with hold up for you. So I'm the dissenter. That makes it a B plus. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad indeed. Which I think probably where it should be. It's not entertaining enough to be an A. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Hashtag where's Eamon? Yeah, where's Eamon? Um, all right, well, that's good. Let's move on to theater two. 